In this lesson we are going to look at tables, also we normally call table a two-dimensional array. Now I expect that you have already used simple tables of one dimension, something like this, where you can see we have created a integer array with 10 elements. If you have not done that, then you should immediately go back and see the video payroll for loop. That would be fine. Otherwise, you can continue here. First, I want to give a little bit uh, introduction to the table concepts. What we see here is actually a table with values here. And what I have shown here is actually an index, and this index is the column index. This means, for example, this here is column number one here. This is actually column number two here. Oh, sorry. And we also have rows. Here I have a row in the table. And the row number or index here is actually one. So when we operate on a table, we have the possibility of going in and uh, look at each cell here. And a cell is actually called an element in the Java language. If I, for example, say table in the row 2 and the column 3 assigns the value 2 multiplied with 3, then I would actually have put in the 6 that is here. Now, if I put in another number, if I did like this, 10, then what will happen is that this value here is actually changed to 10. So, uh, let's go back here and see a little bit what will now will happen. I will now start a very simple program showing some of these things here, like creating a two-dimensional table and assigning some values to the table element. Now, as usual, I've cheated a little bit and make it more or less ready. Now, first remember that when we declare a one-dimensional table, it looks like the data type here comes a square bracket, name of the table, the constructor, the type again, and then there comes this square bracket free. So here I actually have created a table which can maximum have three elements. Now, if I want to declare a two-dimensional table like the one we just saw before, I have to do it a little bit different. Notice there will be double square bracket here, and then I have the table here. And then I can see I now declare to be five rows and four columns. So totally there can be 20 elements which can have assigned values. Well, of course, I can also declare tables holding objects. That means uh, instance of classes like string or something else of your own. So we can actually put anything into a table. Now let's see how can I actually find the number of rows. In order to find the number of rows, I say table dot and then I can see there comes something length here. This is actually the number of rows. But then, what about the columns? Let's try again. Let's say square bracket zero, dot, length. Now, this is, of course, looks a little bit strange, but that is the Java conversion that this here will be the number of columns in row zero. Now, Normally, the tables are created like this, that the number of columns and number of rows are the, not the same, but they are the same number of columns in each row. So uh, we can immediately now try to run this program and see what is printed out. 
Well, it says number of rows is five and number of columns is four. Everything about that is good. But then I have something down here, arrays out of bound exception. Let's look at that. What was it that happened there? Well, it's because a little bit of the program was actually not shown to you. I tried to assign a value to an element. When we assign a value to element, we come with the name of the table and then the row number and the column number. If we look carefully here, we can see this is actually a variable. Looks a little bit strange maybe, but this is the variable or the element in the table. Now, why was there an error? Well, number column was four, but actually you might remember that the index of its start was zero. So I cannot do like this, but I can do like that. Okay. So let's see if we can run it again. Yeah, we didn't get any error this time, so that is fine. Now, let's see how we can traverse the table and print out all elements. This requires a nested loop. The nested loop will be that we first try to change the row number, row, and for each row we print out all the elements in that row here. Now the stop condition looks like this row must be less than the number of rows and the stop condition here is that the column number must be less than the number of columns. And then I can go in and uh, print out the value here. Notice that we can use variables, of course, inside here. So when I print it out, I expect to see some kind of nice table, which I, of course, don't see. I can see that come out some uh, funny things. But one thing I can see is there's a 10 here. And that 10 comes from this one. We can see then that the table was initialized with zero everywhere, and except this one here. If we should have made it a little bit nicer, we could actually have added here. So we can see each uh, element of it. And the value of the element. And here we can see 2, 3 has the value 10. Well, it does not stand very nice actually on the line. So in order to do that, we will change this loop a little bit. I will not print out a line here. I'll add a curly bracket up here and down here. And then when after printing out everything, I would like to print out an empty line. But then uh, maybe I don't need this uh, row and columns anymore. So maybe I should just take out the elements here and then make a little bit space between the elements using the tabulator sign. like this 
and let's try to run it again. Okay, now everything looks fine here. You can see this is the content of the table printed out. Now let's try something else. Let's try to transverse and then assign a value, the actually the same value, to all the table elements. You can see here. Take the loop again. Always good to copy a little bit. And then what I want to do now is I want to make the little table. So I say row multiplied by the column number. And then of course I want to print it out again. Just copy and paste this one. Put it down here. Oh, it happened to be just the wrong position that we can fix. Let's try to run it again. Then we should actually print out exactly what we started with. So it looks something like this here. Mm, yeah. Nearly. Ah, now we can see it. And here we can see there's a little table here. Surrounded with zeros, one, two, three, two, four, five, six, and so on. Notice that the 10 that was here before has now been overruled. So that's about it. This we have seen a little bit of traversing through the table, assignment of table values, and most important we'll see this here is the identifier or the variable of the table element. So uh, the next step will actually be to start an assignment I call Hotel Stays, read it a little bit, and then you could go to the next video called Hotel Stays Project Introduction.